Welcome back to Network Africa. Campaign group Human Rights Watch says that the Somali has released a new report, beg your pardon, saying the Somali government and Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab have been using abusive tactics to sway media coverage. The report did put together documents of killings, threats and arbitrary detention of journalists since 2014. Somali journalist Abdul Qadir Omar Adire has survived an assassination attempt and was also caught up in a militant bomb attack. Well, that draws us into focus. Today being World Press Freedom Day, global observance stresses the freedom of information is a fundamental human right. It weighs the state of press freedom around the world and is a reminder that in dozens of countries, publications are censored, fined and closed down while journalists and editors are harassed, attacked, detained and sometimes murdered. A day is fixed for May 3rd, which is the date adopted by the United Nations in 1993, commemorating the anniversary of the Declaration of Windeck. I'm wondering, what is the Declaration of Windeck? It's a statement of free press principles put together by newspaper journalists in Africa during a UNESCO seminar on promoting an independent and pluralistic African press in Windeck, Namibia, back in 1991. Now, this declaration calls for free, independent, pluralistic media worldwide, characterizing free press as essential to democracy and as a fundamental human right. Uh, joining us now to discuss uh, this important day in my life and the lives of many of my colleagues is uh, the editor of uh, Daily Times newspaper, Yinka Ulujimi. He joins us via telephone. Yinka, thank you for joining us on Network Africa. How significant is this day in the life of a journalist, a reporter or a correspondent? Yinka, how significant is today being World Press Freedom Day in the life of a journalist, a reporter, or a correspondent? We seem to be having problems uh, with the connection there, but we will try to reconnect and uh, join Yinka later. Meanwhile, a business owner in Kisi, Western Kenya, has found a way to market green bananas that are widely grown in the region. Aska Yank at the Kenya Industrial Research and Development Institute in Kishi County, Western Kenya. The government body runs a banana processing plant that trains and provides research for entrepreneurs who want to develop startups in agriculture. Aspiring entrepreneurs also get a chance to rent space and equipment at the facility as they work on growing their business. Ritoke Banana Crisps is currently based at the plant where the growing company processes banana crisps for sale. Aska Nyakwara, the company's founder, has been making the snacks for nine years now. She started formally packaging and selling them in 2013. When I started, I was processing uh, five kilograms per day. But uh, right now, I'm processing 1,000 kilograms. Now, as you can see, the market is growing, and the people now have known the product in the market. Aska is working hard to save up and open a factory where she can run a 24-hour production line. They are currently allowed to process for eight hours a day at the government facility. Once processed and packaged, Ritoke banana crisps are delivered to supermarkets in Kishi town and parts of the country where a pack costs about one dollar. The company also exports its products to clients in Holland. On a good month, Aska makes about two thousand dollars. Finally we have our own. So I want to appreciate this and I want to tell our locals and even people who traverse this area that have a test in these banana crisps. They're really delicious. Kenya launched a devolved system of government in 2013 to try to hasten rural development through 47 new counties and promote businesses like Ritoki. But many in the country fear corruption is a major obstacle to business and law enforcement discouraging investment. We as small SME, it's like we, we, the, the profit we are making or what we, the small thing that, the small money that we are making from the, our, our, our processing, it is taxed up to the end. You feel like leaving the business and going back home. That's the challenge we have. We still have problems of capacity 
um, uh, counties, some counties don't have adequate, uh, say, land. Uh, we also have problems of uh, uh, people understanding, like I've said, people understanding uh, entrepreneurship. So we are investing a lot of money, first of all, into building capacity for people to understand what entrepreneurship is. Banana farming is becoming popular in the country. The government has launched the National Banana Development Strategy to oversee growth of the industry until 2016. Entrepreneurs like Aska are already pushing efforts to commercialize bananas while at the same time giving farmers an opportunity to fetch better profits. We have reconnected with Yinka Olujimi uh, concerning World Press Freedom Day. He is uh, back with us on the line. Yinka, thank you for joining us on Network Africa. Again, I ask how significant is this day in the life of a reporter or a journalist? Well, like every other activity, every other epoch day, today is one day for journal practitioners, entrepreneurs, and the public to recognize a certain aspect of our platform, which is freedom of the truth. That the world has picked the day to recognize us, to recognize the truth as their main to our operations is, is epochal enough. But more than that, is that we are in a new age, we are in a new era, the world has changed. We are in a world where journalism is no longer business by journalists alone. Mm -hmm. It's a brand new thing. We have the social media. One person blog, a post on Twitter, can read as many as millions within minutes. So when we talk about what the first freedom day now, I think it is a misnomer. Hmm. What should be of importance to us now is the world freedom of information day. Where anybody, whether you are a pressman or not, is free to hear his opinions. Just as in the, in the, the, the first amendment to the US Constitution, which says, Congress shall not make any law. So among other things, bridge the freedom of speech. Mm. Freedom of speech, not to prepare. And it is very important, not just to us as journalists, but to all human beings. The freedom to hear your views, the freedom to pass your message across. Of course, that also must be responsibly handled. But as it is, so whether, whether, as to whether it is significant or not, I think I've, I've moved beyond that. It's a significant day, it's a day for stock taking. What used to obtain, those of us who started journalism in the days of little children, we can compare what obtained in the past from 25 years ago to now. And we know there's a lot of difference. There can be an improvement, but there has been a lot of improvement. Thank you. Uh, Yika, uh, well, I'm not done yet, so, but you, you did mention the absence of a Freedom of Information Bill not being properly implemented so that journalists can do their jobs. But what are the challenges are uh, there, you know, to us doing our jobs properly, not just here in Nigeria, but around the world? Because you hear about journalists being one of the most targeted people where, like, endangered species out there. Again. The challenges with journalists all over the world, especially in countries that are not allowing freedom, is not so much a problem of the press, but problems of each nation state, where the people do not have the freedom to air their views, where they have oppressive government. It's a good day for us in Nigeria, we have democracy. There is a large opportunity for us to challenge what the government does. The National Assembly was planning a bill to guide the social media. But it was very clear that if they continued, Nigerians would go to the courts. Under military court, there was no such opportunity. The judicial, executive, and um, legislative powers were concentrated in the act of community. But now, even when we have not got there, where we have not got to where we really need to be, 
we will not say we are not we are not doing an improvement. Mm. Yinka Olujimi, thank you so much for joining us with your thoughts today on World Press Freedom Day. Um, happy World Press Freedom Day to you and to all my colleagues around the world. That's Network Africa. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Vani.